what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here we're gonna be talking about i know what you did last summer in this video here today this is not correlated to what is currently in the works and upcoming with hopefully the return of jennifer love hewitt who has teased her return without denying it and also of course the hopeful return of freddie prince jr it's not about that project and the social media era that that project is going to explore this is about mike flanagan's scrap project that was initially announced almost a decade ago after oculus came out in 2014 there was or i think it actually came out in 2013 i could be mistaken there was a report from deadline saying that mike flanagan had been tapped to basically be involved not only direct but also co-write along with jeff howard a remake of i know what you did last summer now during the 2010s after that announcement nothing ever came of that we started learning plot details over the years bloody disgusting jason jinx i think covered it in a, in a column on bloody disgusting he actually appeared on a podcast last year f with dead central talking about it even further i just want to go over what that story was from mike flanagan and give my thoughts on it and how i think this could compare to what we're about to get so mike flanagan co-wrote this along with jeff howard the screenplay would have opened in Antigua, wasting no time in introducing our main characters, Matt Canton, our lead. So we would have had a, a boy as the lead instead of the traditional girl that we met in the original, Julie James. So Matt Canton would have been our lead. You would have had his younger sister, Lauren, Kyle, his best friend, and Jenna, his ex-girlfriend. The quartet are on vacation, celebrating the summer after graduation before everyone disbands for college in the fall. As with the original, I know there is an opening celebration teens drinking doing drugs and a dead body which kicks off a mystery and a number of ensuing murders now in the story's first act matt meets a young woman named christy stratton and spends time with her in an antiguan cave system amidst throngs of fellow teenage partiers matt is drugged by a well-meaning kyle just before he and christy steal away for a romantic interlude in an offshoot cave just as things begin to heat up for the young lovers the drugs in matt's system overtake him causing the young man to hallucinate before he finally comes to in an antiguan police station being violently questioned being vi violently questioned about the now missing christy then it jumps to one year later after Christie's disappearance we discover that matt has since been ext extradited and imprisoned in the u.s with Christie's disappearance her presumed murder and matt's ensuing trial having captured the nation's attention so definitely dashes of true crime here we learn that kyle testified against matt while jenna now heads up an uber popular serial style podcast on the case called i know what you did last summer obviously in reference to the novel it's based on and the original film and the film itself since it's a remake the title in part refers to the mantra constantly invoked to the media circus surrounding the trial by donald stratton christie's heartbroken and vengeful father matt is eventually found not guilty and freed only to find himself terrorized by scrawled messages bearing the phrase i know hounded by stratton and his thuggish right hand man porter and being stalked by a shadowy figure in a hooded raincoat before long that very figure begins picking off various characters in increasingly violent and inventive ways all as Matt finds himself facing antagonists at every turn, slasher set pieces, red herrings, and shocking revelations abound as the story barrels towards a jaw dropper of an ending, which inevitably unveils the story's true killer and their surprising motivation. Now, I was told, or not told, but listening to the Dread Central podcast, Jinx made it clear that there would have been a role designed specifically for jennifer love hewitt to have a supporting role not just a cameo but a supporting role she would have been the producer behind that girl's podcast featured in this story and i guess she would have had some type of led light kill that would have been pretty iconic and memorable but what happened to mike flanagan's project why did his i know what you did last summer never come to fruition apparently the ending of this remake would have been very dark very twisted and it didn't sit well with the powers that be the producers and the studios i would imagine so they had mike and jeff water down their intent for the story down into this i could say comparable to if you want to like say a scream-esque movie where everything's resolved it's a happy ending everyone's satisfied killers caught and then everyone rides off into the sunset everything's resolved 
And I guess that caused Mike to lose interest in the project, according to Jinx on this Dread Central podcast. And I'll leave a link to that if you want to listen to the full entire podcast. But I guess that's the thing on Mike's end that led to him losing interest because I do vividly recall when that announcement came and then for the rest of the 2010s, nothing else happened. Then Mike had an opportunity to do Friday the 13th. Nothing else happened there. It's like constantly this man who we know has proven himself to be very gifted in the horror genre. He is missing out on some of these very big opportunities to further draw attention to his name. He's doing a great job at that with his original content and has become one of the biggest show creators for Netflix. A big loss for them because I think they just lost him. I think he's moving over to Prime. But if he can ever tap into Nightmare on Elm Street, because he's expressed interest in doing that, tap into I Know What You Did Last Summer, Friday the 13th, I think if he can ever really tap into one of these big IPs, the biggest opportunity he's had recently would be his impeccable sequel to The Shining. But if he can tap into one of these more popular IPs, like again, I Know What You Did Last Summer, uh, your Halloweens, or not Halloween, but Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, the things that we've heard him be reported to be involved with in the past that would then prepare, propel mike flanagan even further beyond just what we in this sphere of the internet and the horror genre in this horror space know about him i think mike flanagan would just be propelled to an even wider audience he should be propelled to a wider audience he has a lot of talent and it's just unfortunate that these opportunities for him to tap into some of our favorite ips never seem to work out i'm glad it worked out fine for the shining but this idea if i know what you did last summer sounds like it would have been a more than competent remake and in comparison to what we're about to get that is going to be a legacy sequel obviously is drawing and most likely just going to be taking the requel route i would argue that mike flanagan's film more than likely would have ended up being the better project and that's without us even seeing what we're about to get i'm not saying that what we're about to get is going to be bad it's just it's hard for me to deny the brilliance that is mike flanagan it's very hard for me to deny that with his track record He's proven himself time and time and again. So I'm very confident that even off of just knowing what was going into this story, this would have appealed to me more than whatever we're about to get. And it would have been something that if the ending that was watered down, it is as good as it is being hyped up. I do see it being something we would have talked about for ages because the ending apparently before it got watered down would have left us talking about it for ages. Very unfortunate. This is not get made. I'll leave a link to the podcast so you can listen to the entire thing. But what do you guys think about this? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all of my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.